Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog, and I'm going to try to get a second episode in here before work today, and I'll edit it and get it up as, as quickly as I can. But today we're going to review Venom number five, or discuss it, I should say. I don't really fully do reviews on here. I like to just say my point of view on it, and then leave it open in the discussion to, in the chat down below in the comments, and you guys can comment down there what you thought of it, and we continue the conversation down there. So I'm just going to give you kind of my, my overall thought on Venom number five. And I will say, when the issue started, I felt a little jarred, because I don't remember, and maybe it did happen, but I don't remember that uh, Eddie and Miles escaped the dragon at the end of the fourth episode, or the fourth issue of the comic. I remember Miles ripping open a part of the dragon and seeing that they were in space, and I think they were flying over Earth, or go, you know, flying away from Earth. But this issue opens up with them falling from space, essentially, into Earth's atmosphere. So I thought that the dragon was in space in the last one, so I don't know how they survived going from there through the atmosphere, you know, like, and not burning up, especially with the symbiote, or maybe they were just on the edge of the atmosphere, but with the way it was drawn, I think they were actually in space. But either way, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter because it's just a nitpicky thing if, if it's a, a continuity error. Uh, but either way, they're falling to the planet. So you, the book opens up, like, in darkness, and then it starts to fade in, and you see Eddie Brock's POV, and he realized that he's falling towards Earth with Miles Morales. And Miles is like, dude, wake up, wake up. And Miles is like slapping him, hitting him with the Venom Blast, doing whatever he can. He's like, dude, wake up. One of you, the suit, Eddie, one of you, wake up. And so they do, they wake up. And then as they're falling to Earth, uh, the suit essentially develops new powers and creates wings. Uh, Eddie grabs Miles and they, you know, glide down to safety onto a rooftop. And then Eddie is like, leaves Miles and says, all right, you know, like, kid, I don't want you involved anymore. Uh, you did you did great. You got us out of there. You know, I don't want you involved, though. I'm going to go off and figure out how to beat this thing. And then Miles like, you know what? That's cool. I'm like, I'm symbioted out for a day anyway. And so uh, so they kind of leave on friendly terms, I guess. But but also Miles is like exhausted after using his Venom Blast numerous times. He's like, I don't even know if I'm going to be good in the fight anyway. So he kind of, you know, they kind of get rid of Miles pretty quickly. And I would say because of that, that's where my biggest critiques of this story come in. Because overall, like a lot of people, I think when they watch my episodes, they think I don't like the new ideas that Donny Cates is implementing. And that's not exactly true. I actually like that he's expanding on the lore in a lot of ways. Um, I, and I just don't, I'm not a big fan of Null. And, you know, I, I need more time to be sold on him. And it sounds like we're going to get that because in a recent an interview Donny Cates said that he has big plans for this universe. He's going to do the Web of Venom one shots like the Carnage Born one and the Ve uh, Venom, Venom in Vietnam, which we're going to get next week. So I'll be reviewing that next week. Uh, and then also the annual, I think, comes out next week. So there's a lot of Venom content coming up, and all of it's going to lead to a big Venom event book that comes out next summer written by Donny Cates. And so he's clearly just laying the breadcrumb. So now it's even harder to really judge his book uh, overall because it's going to be lead to this big, you know, event that's going to happen next summer. So I'll probably stick with it, you know, because I like the ideas overall. I just don't like the pacing and the, the delivery on some of this. I think it's some of it's just really weak on a lot of levels. Like, uh, you know, the first issue felt very jam-packed, had a lot of information, but Eddie felt very active in it. And then after that, Eddie Brock, I would say, hasn't felt very active in this storyline. He's getting a lot of information told to him, and he's just kind of a recipient. He's almost like the audience, but in like the, the dumbest down way possible, to where he's literally in issue two sitting in a chair and being told everything by Rex. And then in issue four, he's being, uh, you know, he's almost unconscious and he's being held by Null and Null's just explaining everything to him. And so it's not even interesting on a visual level. I mean, you have Ryan Stegman drawing this book and you have Venom sitting in a chair for like five pages. Uh, it just doesn't work on that level for me. The ideas are fine. I, I still kind of rail against some of the retconning, like the fact that Eddie Brock's sister apparently doesn't exist anymore, uh, but the little alien rats do from Dark Origin. I'm like, so you're going to reference the rats from Dark Origin, but not Eddie Brock's sister, who I feel like has way more involvement in Eddie Brock's upbringing than that rat does to the symbiote's upbringing. Uh, so it's just, I'm curious by Donny Cates' decisions. I, I find them curious. Uh, so for that reason, like, you know, I, I kind of rail against him sometimes. But uh, overall, the ideas are neat. Like, you know, the, the overall concepts he's delivering are kind of neat. And they do bring a lot of new stories uh, to the table for Venom. 
But in this issue, like I felt like the first half was typical stuff I don't like. It's like, all right, we're just gonna get them back down to earth. We're gonna have Eddie just, we, we can't have Miles for the ending, so we're just gonna push Miles aside. And it's like, okay, well, why have Miles in it at all then? You know, unless Miles is gonna come back later and play another part in another storyline, which I hope that's the case, uh, because I like the banter between him and, and Eddie. Uh, but in here, again, you have, after he drops Miles off, you have like three pages of, of Venom and Eddie talking and the Venom suit saying, oh, when Noel touched me, he kind of uh, connected me to him. And it, it reminded me of what makes our race so special is that, you know, we bond with other things. So when I was a part of Noel for a second, he opened my eyes to all these other things I could do, you know, conveniently, in my opinion, uh, where now the suit can, you know, create wings, which I never thought it couldn't do that before. I mean, Eddie Brock has made shields before. So why couldn't he have made something that would help him glide down somewhere uh, or a parachute or, you know, or something or wings or whatever. So I don't think the suit couldn't do that before. Just no other writer did that before. Um, and then also the suit even mentions that it can slow Eddie Brock's heart rate down so that it can, um, you know, like have him calm down so it can explain th things to him without him freaking out. And he's like, whoa, you can do that. And the suit's like, yeah, we can do a lot of new things now. But again, even that, I feel like the suit could have done before and probably even has done before, just not focused on or outright said. Uh, because remember there was that issue where Eddie Brock played dead and the suit slowed his heart rate down so that way the guards would come in and then he could break out or Carnage did that or something. And But it was one of the suits did it. So it, that, to me that's already kind of been established and here it's kind of presented as a new thing and I'm like, oh, I don't think that's that new to be honest with you. But again, we have Eddie Brock just sitting there hearing information from another character and not actively doing anything. And it's not until the suit whispers something into his ear and says, look, I know a way we could probably fight back against Null but here's, let me explain it to you. And he whispers it to him um, and then for, for really no reason other than just to hide it from the audience for two more pages. And then Eddie goes back and finds Rex. And I kind of figured Rex would come back in because when this is put in one trade paperback coming up soon, it's called Venom Rex. And so I was kind of thinking he wasn't just going to be the, the first two issues, that he'll probably come back and play a major role. And a major role he does play because here again is why I like some of the concepts and ideas and where I'm like, I, I kind of rail against the execution on some of it. But this I actually liked. You have Rex reveal himself to be a full symbiote. Rex, the character, the human, died apparently in Vietnam. And ever since then, this symbiote has disguised himself as Rex, has become Rex, and has worked for S.H.I.E.L.D. and other agencies and uh, over the years, and has been keeping an eye on symbiote activity on Earth, hoping that Null would never come back. And he was protecting these four other symbiotes uh, along with S.H.I.E.L.D. to ever be, you know, you know, contacted by Null's power. And so now that Null is kind of reforming, those four formed the Grendel and made their big, you know, dragon creature. And Rex is the fifth piece of that puzzle, uh, which I kind of was assuming a little bit in the beginning, but it was neat to see it actually revealed. And it kind of surprised me a little bit the way they did it. So I got to give Donnie Cates credit on that one uh, because I was like, hey, I didn't see that coming and I like it, which is really, you know, which I was like, hey, that's good. I like something in this book a lot. And so now Rex has, you know, told the symbiote essentially Eddie and he's like hey um you know I was part of him and now that I'm not I felt the light and light is what we call kind of humans and other beings out there that have a different kind of influence than the darkness had and you know you have the ability to be good you have the ability to do these things so I kind of liked being part of Rex he was a good human being and so I try to live in his honor and do things in his honor and do things the way I think he would want to want them to be done so that'll be cool to see and explore and we'll talk about more of Rex stuff probably in the Vietnam issue that comes out next week and more of this origin story but in this one you know the suit says look if you join me all the null powers and the grendel powers that you have if you combine with me the suit you know with eddie will become powerful enough to probably stop or at least fight back and stand a chance against null so will you join us and so that's what happens at the end of this issue big spoiler alert uh, you know if you don't want to know anymore you definitely turn away now if you haven't already uh, but in this one you know the suit offers a, a convergence with uh with Rex and so Rex turns into a symbiote form and then bonds with Eddie and then they turn into essentially Venom like you see because early drawings a lot of these drawings you see Ryan Segman kind of channeling the Todd McFarlane like early days of Venom and then now that he's bonded his eyes look a little different his the body shapes a little different and now he's like a little bit more amped up and so he looks like you know Venom like I was like oh wow he went from early days Venom to the Venom that probably a lot of people recognize as Venom like a more beefed up Venom 
Uh, so now that they're together, you know, uh, Rex is like, hey, you know, Eddie can hear two voices in his head. He hears Rex and he hears the other symbiote, but the other symbiote's lying dormant right now because they're letting Rex take control because he will know how to fight against Null. And so they're like, all right, take us down like, to your basement. What do you got down there weapon-wise? And, and Rex's like, yeah, I've been working for S.H.I.E.L.D. and other companies all these years, so I have a lot of stuff ready for this battle. I've been preparing for a battle like this for a long time. And they go down to the basement and they just see all these like high-tech super weapons and guns and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. That's neat that there's all that down there. But I was hoping for at least one kind of super weapon, like a sword or something that kind of ties back to like the medieval stuff, you know, something that like would, you know, challenge Noel. Like Noel made the first symbiote into a sword. So I was thinking like theme wise and symbolic wise, maybe there should be a sword or a weapon that he strikes Noel down with. But it's just a bunch of guns. And I know on the cover of issue six, it's Venom jumping with a bunch of guns. So I hope that's not the case. I hope we see more weapons. Uh, but at least for this, I was like, well, okay, they're amping up and it's Eddie Brock making a choice kind of, although he's being led by two other characters. So I find Eddie to be very passive in this. And it almost feels like uh, that Donnie Cates doesn't even want to write Eddie Brock. And I know he's going to change that up in the next story. He's going to do a more of an emotional story that focuses on Eddie Brock from what the solicits say. But for this one, I felt like starting off on this run, it almost felt like you could replace Eddie with anyone else and you get the same story. And that's kind of a bummer for me as an Eddie Brock fan. But that's just my opinion. You guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you read Venom number five? What do you think of it? Is there anything in this issue that I missed? Is there something I talked about that I don't like that you do like? And if there's something I do like that you don't like, let me know all that down below so we can continue the conversation down there. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.